Well, we've been collecting uh, ants from the hyperdiverse ant genus Phydoli for over 15 years now. We came across this one colony after all these years where we found these anomalies or these things that don't look quite like the normal minor workers and soldiers you see in the colony. This was in Long Island, New York. Uh, we found them uh, sort of off the side of the highway, somewhere close to Medford. This is a species called Phydoliria, and we're looking at, there are three types of workers in Phydoliria. You have minor workers, soldiers that look somewhere intermediate, and these monstrous looking uh, super soldiers that have you know, these giant mandibles, a really big head, and you can see is much larger than the minor workers and the soldiers in this species. Uh, they were quite striking and they really caught my eye and it was quite a surprise for us. So we're just going to dump a tube for you which will make them go nuts. Yeah, that's good. You see if the soldier's trying to bite it? You can see the attack. You can see the defense, yeah. You see right there? Bite the stick. This is one of the most hyper-diverse genera period in, in all of animals and plants. I mean, there's over 1,100 species in this single ant genus. And only eight of these species have evolved this novel super soldier cast. Once we found these, we went to E.O. Wilson's uh, Fidoli in the New World, okay? And we looked for these, where we could find these new, this novel super soldier cast, and they all occur exclusively in the American Southwest and Northern Mexico. So once we found these anomalies, we immediately got on a plane, uh, got my students, we were all excited, we were running up and down the hallways here at McGill, and we said, we have to find these. We got on the first plane to Arizona, <laughs> with our collecting gear, and we went in search of, of two species that had super soldiers, a species called Phydoli rhea and Phydoli obtusospinosa. After several weeks of search, we, we managed to locate their colonies. We collected several of these colonies, and we brought them back to McGill. And there, we, we started to look for uh, the striking similarities between the anomalies that we found in Long Island and these super soldiers. Once we brought them, the, the super soldiers back to McGill, we wanted to know if we can reproduce these anomalies or try and induce things that look like super soldiers in species that don't normally have them. And so we applied hormone during a very critical period during development, and we were able to produce things that look exactly like the super soldiers. And so not only in one species, but we were able to do it in any species that we tried, which gave us the idea that this is a developmental potential that's there, a hidden developmental potential that exists in the whole genus. And given the right kind of stress, environmental stress, or either through the hormones or through nutrition, that this developmental potential could be released. And if it's released in the right circumstances, that means you could get super soldiers that evolve. Well, it means that uh, variation is not as random as we would once have thought. There is this hidden developmental potentials lying dormant, this sort of genetic potential that lies dormant, that with the right kind of uh, change in the genetic code or change in the environment could release this potential. And these potentials are very much adaptive and that could have enormous power for evolution. Mm -hmm.